So project management. Uh, project management is often thought to be Gantt charts and plans. Um, but what I hope that uh, I've got across in the previous lectures is that the first part of project management, the first project management document, the first project management tool, is actually the project specification, which describes exactly what this project is all about. Uh, but this series of lectures uh, and video clips for lecture three looks at various project management planning tools, and this uh, first video is an introduction to them. So the aims of the whole lecture in uh, lecture three is to look at the first set of project planning tools, and we'll be looking at a second set of project planning tools in lecture six. The four planning tools that we're going to investigate as part of project planning one uh, are work breakdown structures, often referred to as WBS work breakdown structures, responsibility matrices, cost accounts, and dependency charts. They're going to be our next four project planning tools, so work breakdown structures. It's useful at this point just to show a project life cycle. Uh, now, we're going to talk about project life cycles more in uh, lecture four and the videos that go along with it. But um, as we go through the life of the project, we're preparing to run the project here. And we've got some senior management approval to develop some detailed project management plans. And the first thing we're going to do is identify what we need to do in the work breakdown structure. So the project specification has been approved. The management have approved us to move to the next stage to prepare the project plans in more detail. So we're going to look at work breakdown structures responsibility matrices, cost accounts, and dependency charts. But why are we creating plans? What is the purpose of uh, planning? And there's another purpose of planning uh, for the Project Planning 2 lecture. Well, we need to find out what needs to be done. What are we going to do on the project? And that's the purpose of the work breakdown structure. It's going to identify what we are going to do. We're going to find out who is doing the work, and that's going to be the job of the responsibility matrix. We're going to find out how much work is involved and how much it's going to cost. That's the purpose of the cost account. And then we're going to sort out the sequence of activities, what comes first, what comes second, what can be done at the same time. That's the purpose of the dependency chart. So the purpose of planning is to find out what we're doing, who's doing it, how much it costs, and what's the sequence of activities. Um, but really, you know, we're planning for different reasons. Yes, we need to understand what we're doing and who's doing it and in which sequence we're doing it and how much it costs. But we're creating a plan such that we can monitor the progress as the project happens. Because if we haven't got a plan, we don't know whether we're ahead of schedule or behind schedule. And if we don't know whether we're ahead of schedule, we don't know whether to speed up, whether to slow down. It would be a bit like going on a journey that you've never done before. Remember, a, a project is unique. So a journey that you've never done before and doing it without a map. How do you know whether to speed up? How do you know whether to slow down? How do you know what corrective action you need to take to get back on time? So we're planning to find out what we're doing, who's doing it, how much, what sequence, but we're also planning such that we can monitor progress against the plan. Now, I would encourage planning as a team. Get the team to help you create the project plans. And we're going to see examples of this in the next, uh, next uh, few video clips. It's going to help the communication process because people are going to talk to each other about what they're doing, what needs to be done, what's the sequence of activities. And by talking, we're going to flush out all of those problems. And because it gains the commitment of the team for the project, it becomes their project plan. One of the worst things you can do as a project manager is to disappear into your office, fill out a Microsoft project plan, hit print, Give it to your team members and say, that's the plan. And they're thinking, yeah, mate, that's your plan. It's not our plan. So I think we need to plan as a team. Now, there might be three different levels of planning. The senior managers need to see the strategic level plan. So it's very high level, 
I mean, really, the senior managers really want to know, when are you going to finish? They might then say, are you on budget? Will it work? But when are you going to finish? They just need the key high-level detail. There might need to be an operational plan for the middle management. So the management for the manufacturing department need to know when the design is finished or when the sales and marketing process starts, but they don't need to see the detail of the sales plans or the detail of the design plan. So the middle managers need an awareness of the whole project at a middle level of detail. The detail plan is for day-to-day -day control of the project. There might be more than one of these plans. The design department will have a detailed plan about what they need to do to design this new product. The manufacturing department will have a detailed plan about what they need to do to clear the factory space, to install new machines, to train their operators. The design department do not need to see the detail in the manufacturing plan. And the manufacturing department don't need to understand the detail in the design plan. So these detail plans, there could be several versions of them.